does have an eagle on it. That is a great find. that good a day has it? No, but it uh, probably was a better day than the other day was. I found a fender clip, found a harmonica reed, I found a uh, saddle piece. Yeah, it's a rabbit radio piece. We're looking good, Ken and Mark. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Yeah. Detectees.com. Uh huh. Mm hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> On the first part of uh, the video, you were hunting by yourself here. I was hunting by myself in Kentucky, and that's kind of what we've been doing, but uh, we have got a couple of hunts in. It's probably dinner time now. Well, yeah, five. yeah. And uh, we got some shade, and we can hunt for uh, probably five hours, I guess. Uh, what we've done today from about seven till about 12. I can't wait till fall comes. I can't either. I mean, of course, you can hunt pretty much all day in the fall. So if this heat will, it'll get to you pretty quick. You have to stay hydrated. It bothers me, I tell you. All right, I'm still dealing around this old burnt spot. But anyway, I got this little spoon bowl out. I'm not for sure how old it is. It seems like it might be pure. Pretty neat find. Out of that hole right there, I've got a 36 caliber or 31 caliber bug ball. It's been fired. Yeah, I just got this little uh, buck leather ground. It scared me a little bit. It's brass. I found a lot of iron buckles like that, but I've never really found a brass one. So, still works. Hmm. Need a little fun. I'll take it. Out of that plug right there in the bottom of it, I'm just a little ways from where I found the other buck ball. I've got another 31 caliber buck ball. Not as exciting as a plate or a, even a three ringer, but that is American Civil War history on a picket post here. We got in a, uh, well, we didn't get into one, but Jeff told me we hunted another spot in front of the car here probably 100 yards 150 yards and he said now there's a bumblebee nest and I, other side of that tree so I was staying back and I felt something on my leg and it was on my sock and I brushed it <laughs> we got out of there and come back over here yeah I found it the rough way I got ended up getting stung six times before I could get out of there so, uh, with a bush hog yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know both of us we got stung in the belly earlier didn't we <laughs> well, they're swelled up. <laughs> and I'm, uh, Mark Hoover, I'm having trouble remembering where the soldiers were right here. Of course, things have changed since 1862, mm -hmm. and it's hard for me to remember back that far. You know? <laughs> I got another Gallagher case. The hole is right there. This is just the very tip of uh, the uh, case. Brass. Another Civil War relic. All right, I had a uh, pull tab reading, and uh, I dug there. It was right on top of the ground, and I've got some kind of two-piece button. I'm not 100% sure. It's got something on it. Maybe it's like maybe just a general service cuff. No, I can make out the eagle right there. It's got something in the shield, so I'm not for sure. Maybe an eye. Maybe an infantry cuff. I'll have to get it 
get it home and under the magnifying glass. Or it may be an artillery. But it's kind of mashed a little bit. Shank's still there. So, but I'll take it. Nice little find. And then, of course, here you can see a little pottery come out of the hole with it. So. Alrighty, I'll be back with you. Hey, talk about the uh, talk about the tongue that you found. The uh, militia tongue. Actually, the uh, Massachusetts troops won through the Civil War, and then uh, of course they were sold. Uh, I think between 1854 to 1854 to 1860, and then uh, just different people had them, but mainly just the uh, militia. So it was a good find. We've been looking for the reefs and. Haven't had any luck yet. All right, I've got a great target out of the hole. I don't, you can see it laying right there on top of the uh, clod. It, that's the way it come out. I dug and popped the clod out and bam, it was right there. So, but anyway, I am at a uh, old home site of a Confederate general. Now, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this is Confederate. I don't know if it's Union. Of course, I know the Union soldiers camped here during the Civil War, but, uh, I, and it may even be uh, World War II, but I've never found one, so I'm really not for sure uh, exactly what it is. But it is a it's it's a great find. Let me get my hang on. It is a uh, tongue. It's not a uh, CS tongue, but it is a uh, belt buckle, and it does have an eagle on it. And the, the wings are, uh, they're not drooped or anything, so. But yeah, that is a great find. I'll have to clean it up and then uh, do a little bit of research and I'll get back with you. So, but hopefully the tongue's laying around here too. But this little site I, I'm hunting right here, it was the original home site uh, when they first uh bought the land they had a log cabin here and then uh, the uh, I guess it was her great-grandfather or grandfather burn it down because I guess it was just in the way but anyway he burned it down and this is what I'm hunting now so but anyway I'll be back with you I'm gonna do a little bit of research and see what this is <laughs> This tongue is a fantastic find by Jeff, which likely was worn by a Confederate soldier. It is a tongue of a militia two-part buckle with the eagle facing right, rectangular in shape with rounded edges and fancy curved keepers. The reef had a fancy border that included two stars. This stock militia two-part plate was available for purchase by militia units in the 1840s or 1850s. The Ridgeway Reference Library says that most of these that are lost in the field were used by Southerners, although they were originally supplied to units in both the North and South, many reportedly being worn by Massachusetts troops. Some later versions were also sold to private organizations after the war, primarily fire departments, musicians, and other organizations. The general patriotic design of this buckle were sand cast plates and they're noted for poor workmanship and crude castings. This buckle is listed as plate 329 in O'Donnell and Campbell's military plate book. What a great find. Now if we can only find the wreath that goes with it. Hunted with, uh, well you found that with Equinox and I did. And then we hunted the last hunt with AT Pros with a snake coil. And then after we got done, I took my Equinox out and hit a spot right there that we had just hammered. And uh, I got a good signal and it was a head stamp. And so yeah. today, whenever I came in, I started, well, we both started with Equinox. And uh, we pulled a little bit more stuff out of there. Yeah. Using the Knox today, and I've got a uh, harmonica reed. 
pretty good piece of a harmonica reed right there. Been a week or two since I found one, I'll take it. Out of that hole right there, I've got what I believe is the top to an oil lamp. Wider down here and narrow there. It's just all mashed together. That was a circle here and a circle up there. Probably the top to an oil lamp. Jeff got no buckle, and we think that this is a uh, gun part. Maybe an extractor or something. I don't know. Of course, they wouldn't have had an extractor on a musket, but they would have on a lighter gun. But yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Looks familiar anyway. I've seen these on shotguns like that. I don't know, maybe somebody knows. If you do, we'll leave a comment. I got an impression right there that you can see. I'm just going to peel that top right there. Ah, foot. See the impression? Anyway, there's what was in it. That's going to be a suspender clip, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. All there. Uh, that part of it is there. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Man, it's good. Facing something there. But over here, got a brass thermal. That's an old thimble there. Brass. Decorative up here at the top. I like it. We're out beside the house here now. We were digging over toward the cars. And I had a good solid 14 here all the way around. It's a piece off of a saddle leather straps or leather pieces would have come out of that. I think that they're just decoration, but you see them on saddles. What you got? You see her there? Another one of them pieces, hammered out lead. Flip it over there, man. Yeah? Mine is in my box here. Go ahead and open it up. What the? I flip it over. Huh. But it's lead. Yeah. An old lead pull tap. <laughs> <laughs> Want to remind you that every Thursday night on Spreaker.com at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we got what? We got Relics Radio. And then, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. 7 o'clock Central. Uh, We've managed to have some great guests, I'll tell you. We have. We've been very blessed with the guests we've had, and we really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, we've had some good uh, listenership, too. I've had a, uh, I, told, I was telling Jeff a while ago, uh, had a guy from Australia got in touch with me, wanting to know if they could pick that up on uh, iHeartRadio, I think, or iTunes One, and I told him, yeah. We're on iTunes, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Spreaker, uh, and there are several... Uh, mediums there that you can go to and find Relics Radio. Just key it in. It's got an S on the end of it. Relics Radio. Relics Radio. Relics Radio. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, check it out there. But uh, we'll see you Tuesday on YouTube, and we'll see you Thursday. Well, we'll we'll you'll listen to us Thursday on Relics Radio. There you go.